You are listening to Charting Wealth's comprehensive review and forecast for the week beginning Tuesday, January 2nd, 2018. Happy New Year, my friends. This, of course, means the quarter has ended. We just finished recording the quarterly review. It is attached to the email that all of our subscribers receive. If you're not a subscriber, you need to be one because you're missing out on all the really, really good stuff. Not like our comprehensive review and forecast and our daily reviews aren't good stuff, but particularly all the specialized training. You get that if you are a subscriber. How do you become a subscriber? Go to chartingwealth.com, put in your name and email address, and boom, you will get all of it, including our daily market worksheet, weekly market worksheet, trade worksheet, the layout that we use at freestockcharts.com, along with the quarterly layout that actually is attached with the email for those of you who received this comprehensive review, it is attached there. We have three things actually for you. We have the quarterly review. We have the quarterly chart training that tells you how that quarterly chart works and how to use it. And we have the layout for the quarterly chart. Also, we have a contest going where I'm going to call the winner of the contest and give them a 15 to 30 minute person to person training that they're going to get. And it's going to be based on what charting wealth means to you, how you've used it, how it's helped you. That is being run out of our Facebook page. So just go to Charting Wealth. Hopefully you've all gone there and liked us. But go to Charting Wealth's Facebook page and post what we've done for you. And we get 100 or more people, 100 is a minimum, that have posted there. We will be picking the winner. And of course, that person is, and again, you don't have to be a long-term subscriber, but of course that helps. But if you've just started and you can give us a good rendition as to what it's done for you, how it has helped you, because we work hard preparing this for you every single day. You don't get charged a penny for it. It takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of money to put this out. And we so appreciate you and hope you appreciate us and would love to hear from you. Now, Let's continue to move through what's going on. Again, working hard here over the weekend, getting this information out to you. What do we see? How did the year end, actually the week, how did it end for the S&P 500? Friday was down 0.38%. And what do we see? Well, the first time in five weeks, we actually have a red candle, and this is more than just the doji we saw for the week ending back the 17th of November. We actually have a red open box candle. Now, the good news, of course, is there is an up wick on top, not a long down wick, but we do see that the price percent oscillator is heading down, and we see that the derivative oscillator, for the first time in many weeks, has lost energy. We don't have a crossover going down yet. Price movement's still well above the weekly trend line. Now, we could draw that trend line probably a little bit tighter. That's not a bad thing to do. It's nice to go back in time, but as time moves along, and again, good training on trend lines, that is the latest chapter of our book. That's available at Charting Wealth under training at the website chartingwealth.com, and we also have some good training on trend lines, but we've been able to connect three trend lines and actually price movement has crossed over and is sitting right on or maybe just a little below that. So again, that's a bit of a warning bell, along with the price percent oscillator moving down, derivative oscillator losing energy. So pay attention. If you've been in a long uptrade, and it's been beautiful, hasn't it? Since the jumping in point somewhere around 250 as high, and this is over the course since, what, October? The beginning of October up through the end of December, things have been as high as 268.60. From 150 to 268.60, that's damn good in anybody's book. And that's the beauty of the weekly vertical crossover. Now let's look at the two-day chart. What do we see there? We see that it has been penetrated. We've literally had three two-day candles. That's six days of sideways. Well, it's actually more than that. It's really eight days of sideways sliding movement and... At the end of the latest candle, we actually have a two-day crossover going down, a two-day crossover going down, which is important. Now, there's a big, big up day 
on Tuesday when the market opens back up after the New Year's holiday, that could be erased. That's possible, but probably not, well, not very probable. And we do have a penetration on the two-day chart of the two-day trend line movement still above on the weekly trend line on that two-day chart. But we do have a confirmed crossover going down, which again, doesn't give us the ability at this point to jump into a trade if the four-hour chart rotates over. As we look at the four-hour chart, we see it was up in the morning. Actually, there had been three candles. It was up on Thursday, up in the morning on Friday, and then a big drop-off at the end of the day on Friday, penetrating the two-day trend line. So again, we were hoping to maybe see a crossover going up and the ability to jump in but we now see some strong down movement. So keep that in mind with the S&P 500 for those of you who follow it and who are in a trade right now or looking to get into one. We don't have the ability to jump into one now and doesn't look very likely on an up trade in the near future, but we shall see. Um, again, things are still moving up on the weekly chart. What do we see on the weekly chart when it comes to the cues? Actually, we ended the week with, I'm going to have to call it, it is, it is a weekly crossover going down. It is not a strong one, not real happy about calling it, but it is a crossover going down. We're going to remove our trend line because we don't have one at this point. And we do have a crossover going down. The reason I don't like it is we haven't seen the derivative oscillator crossover. We like to see that happen at the same time. Doesn't mean you have to jump into anything on the queues over the course of the next week with the holiday and then the opening of the market and the big people being back in control of things. By that, I mean folks coming off vacation and actually getting back into the office off their break. The caretakers have been in charge in the meantime, in many instances. What do we see going on on the two? But again, we have a crossover on the price percent oscillator. Derivative oscillator is not yet crossed over. We have a red down candle, really a spinning top, meaning lots of indecision for the week. Is that the topping off of the cues. It may be. We saw prior to that on Friday the 22nd last week, we saw the two-day chart crossover going down. And of course, that's been followed by the candles moving down. Price movement is below the two-day trend line. And it has reverted over finally on the derivative oscillator. Price percent oscillator continuing to move down strongly. What do we see on that four-hour chart? Again, down movement in the morning, followed by strong down movement in the afternoon. So again, those of you who want to practice using your knowledge from the weekly vertical crossover, we now have one going down in the queues, which of course means that you could look at a put position, a short position. On Monday after 1030, you can also look at buying an inverse fund, such as First one that comes to mind, QID, uh, which I believe is a double inverse, if I recall correctly. And of course, we've got great training where we talk about all those inverse funds. Inverse funds, what to do when markets crash. I remember that name. It is an excellent training. If I have to say so myself, I was very proud of it. And you guys have really liked it. I encourage you to go check that out at chartingwealth.com. Let's keep moving through these charts. We see that the TLT, the 20-year Treasury bond fund, up on Friday 0.16%. Two weeks of down movement on the weekly chart. We can see that we have two weeks of down movement. However, the price percent oscillator has refused to cross over going down. The derivative oscillator is also still in the green, although we do have two full weeks of down movement. Two-day chart on TLT is actually moving, has been moving down, crossed over going down on the 21st. Over the last three days, however, three two-day candles, forgive me, six days, we've seen up movement the last four days, the last two two-day candles, we've seen strong up movement, the strongest being the candle ending the 29th on Friday. That encompasses Thursday and Friday, of course, strong up movement, very strong pushing up and through the two-day 
trend line. Still don't have a crossover going up yet. And we do have a confirmed crossover going down. So keep your eye on the prize. If the markets, that is the stock market, continues to move down, remember a safe haven's typically bonds. And you may continue to see bonds move up if this is a real crossover. Just keep in mind the weekly chart still in a confirmed uptrend. Two-day chart isn't as strong as the weekly. Remember, it's two and a half times weaker. But it is still something that we watch and look at. Now, let's look at the four-hour chart. What's it showing us? Well, it has continued to move up, crossed over, going up back on the morning of Wednesday the 27th and sort of peaked out, it looked like there, in the more on the afternoon of the 28th, Thursday the 28th, but then managed to move a little higher on Friday as pushed through the two-day trend line and we'll continue to watch and see if it's strong enough. It might rotate that two-day chart over so that there might be a jumping in point on continued up moves on TLT. Lastly, we're going to go to gold. Gold continues to knock it out of the park. Getting close to a weekly vertical crossover going up hasn't happened yet with gold. Derivative oscillators losing downward momentum. Price percent oscillator appears to be heading up strongly toward a crossover hasn't happened, but we have two weekly up candles the last week up very, very strong. And as we look at the two day chart, we of course see that it crossed over going up back on the 22nd, Friday the 22nd, la the Friday before last, and uh, moved up strongly since then. The last two two day candle, the last, well, all three of them, but the last two have been the strongest in the entire set of up moves. Derivative oscillator moving up strongly, price percent oscillator shooting up. And we go to our four hour chart. Those of you who use that as a trading chart, isn't it beautiful? Got a little weird in mid November, but unlike what it traditionally does, it gets weird around the holiday, the Christmas holiday. Didn't do it this year, done it in the past multiple times, but shot over on the 14th and almost never looked back and has just tracked through the roof. So again, keep your eye on that four-hour candle. Those of you who use that as your total trading chart, you have done well. You have done well, Lord Vader. Uh, we saw the jumping in point somewhere around, what, the 119 mark or so? Yeah. And well, yeah, 119, as high as, oh gosh, as high as 124 in just the last week and a half or so. Just absolutely, two weeks, just absolutely beautiful. So again, how long do we use charts? As long as they work. My friends, that's where we are as we end the week. Let us hear from you. Go to Facebook and please post your good things about charting wealth and how we have helped you. And also, please make sure to take that quarterly training and to listen to the quarterly review that we've done just for you. Happy New Year, my friends. God bless from the entire team here at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.